Hey, and welcome to the Short Stuff. I'm Josh and there's Chuck and we're going Short Stuff architectural style, specifically architectural style from the mid to late 19th century, specifically in Manhattan and the Upper West Side, specifically about the Dakota. That's right. Can I say something very quickly since this is Short Stuff? Sure. Right before we recorded, you said Dakota Fanning. And that reminded me, I just got back from New York and I had six celebrity sightings, one of which was Elle Fanning. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She's in the the lobby of a hotel. I go in that hotel to pee. i am always got my head on a swivel in that town, especially in fancy hotel lobbies. Sure. And I was like, hey, that's Dakota Fanning. And I was like, she was sitting with people. I was like, there's got to be somebody else famous. Went to the bathroom, came out, sitting next to Jessica Chastain. Wow. Pretty major sighting. Uh, then at one of my pavement shows, I saw uh, uh, Noah Bombach and Greta Gerwig. Are they an item? Or are they uh, just yeah, friends? they're married. Oh, okay. Wow. You could say so. A power couple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he co-wrote uh, Barbie with her. And um, uh, Dean Wareham of Luna, they're all good friends, and they were all together. So that was a, a three-banger in one. <laughs> and this uh, this lady near me was jumping up and down, like screaming at uh, at Greta Gerwig, and she was very sweet from up above in the balcony and, like, made the little heart symbol and, like, said she loved her. It was very sweet. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, and then uh, sat next to Tiffany Haddish on the on the flight home. Wow. Wee. Like she was acro- across the aisle from me. Did you bu- did you bug her the whole time? No, nah, I didn't say anything. Were you like, hey, hey, Tiffany, you remember this one joke you told? That was <laughs> hilarious. She's great, though. She's very pretty, too. Yeah. Yeah, she is wonderful. I like that voice, too. She's got that sort of uh, low voice. Mm-hmm. Kind of like this. I am Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. We got to go because we're talking the Dakota here, not Dakota Fanning or L Fanning. No, the apartment building in New York City. That's right. The one where John Lennon was shot in front of? Or yeah. Did he, he just lived there at the time. No, no, no. He lived there and he was he was shot on the sidewalk outside the Dakota. So um, that's not the only reason the Dakota's famous, although it's probably the biggest reason the Dakota's famous. One of the reasons that Dakota is famous is because it was one of the first apartment buildings in New York City. Like, they didn't do apartments back then. And even more spectacular than that, it being one of the first apartment buildings, is that it was plunked down in the Upper West Side at a time when Central Park West, one of the um, most, uh, what is it, white-heeled, high-heeled, well-heeled? Well-heeled. Uh, like, bits of stretches of real estate in the world mm-hmm. was a dirt road still and nowhere's fill. Nowhere. Yep. Nobody wanted to go up that far. They were like, there's nothing up there. That's right. Bunch of hayseeds. In, <laughs> in fact, it was so far out that um, the guy who built the Dakota, who we'll meet in a second, Edward Cabot Clark, bought it from an industrialist whose wife threatened to divorce him if they, <laughs> he built their house out there. And he's like, all yeah. right, I'll just get rid of this piece of land then. Yeah, she's like, I want to live down here where it's posh in Alphabet City. You know, what's funny is if you um, you remember if you uh, go read our book, there's a whole chapter on keeping up with the Joneses. And it, oh, yeah. it talks a lot about this part of, of New York history where there yeah. are all sorts of nowheresvilles around that today are just like incredibly famous and, and expensive. That's right. Uh, all right. So the Dakota, like you said, people were not living in apartments at the time. They were living in brownstones, which were uh, single family homes. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were a couple, like a couple started to spring up in the 1870s. Uh, They weren't great. They were kind of like you think of New York apartments. They were small. They didn't have a lot of light. Uh, People didn't love renting uh, and living in them. Uh, And uh, along came this guy, Edward uh, Cabot Clark, that you mentioned. He was the president of the Singer Sewing Machine Company. So he was loaded. Yeah. And he got together with an architect named Henry Janeway Hardenberg, a great name, and uh, to get into real estate. And the first thing they built, which is sadly not there anymore, is uh, kind of a prototype for the Dakota called the Van Corlear, a red brick five-story, 36 apartment building that was on 7th between 55th and 56th. Yeah, and it immediately improved on its predecessors um, because the rooms were larger the apartments themselves were larger. There was a courtyard, so there was plenty of, like, natural light and air. Um, it had elevators, apparently, which, Wowie, I mean, we're wow. talking, like, the 1880s, 1870s. Um, and there was also, um, I think, a, uh, 
what was there? Oh, there was a ramp that went beneath it so that Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have to sully your family reputation by accepting deliveries out there in public. You could go down to the basement and meet the delivery driver to give them, to take whatever they gave you. Yeah, and it was just nicer overall. I think there was a, an intercom system and, you know, like Spanish tile. It was just it was just a step up for sure. And all of a sudden in 1878, uh, they rented out very quickly. And so Clark was like, all right, uh, it turns out if you, if you build it nice enough, they will come. And apartments can be a real thing. And like you said, bought that uh, property, or I guess – it was just land at the time, right? Yeah. Yes. Bought this land from Jacob Henry Schiff mm-hmm. uh, way, way uptown and uh, decided to build his second uh, sort of dream property there. Yep. Which would be the Dakota. And I say that we pause for a message break and then return and begin talking about the Dakota some more. And Tiffany Haddish right after this. Burning stuff with Joshua. Uh, so, Chuck, um, we're talking about the Dakota now, starting now. Okay. So, if the Van Corlear was a, 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 an advancement based on the stuff that came a few years before it, mm-hmm. the Dakota was an even better advancement or improvement based on the Van Corlear. It had big apartments, big rooms, courtyard, lots of light, a ramp underneath and all that stuff. But it was also like even more luxuriously designed. Like if you came over to someone's apartment, you couldn't see through down the hallway to every single room. The walls were kind of like designed around so that you you couldn't like there was a, a separation between your visitors yeah. and the living part of the apartment or the sleeping part. You know, the family part, I guess, is what you would call it. Just little details like that. Um, another big detail was that it had its own power plant that generated electricity yeah. for it in the 1870s. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the kitchens had little balconies. So if you had stinky stuff like garbage that you couldn't get down mm-hmm. or maybe even stinky food or something, you could put it just right outside the kitchen, which was uh, something that a lot of places didn't have. Yeah. Uh, they had a boiler. Uh, so they had insulated pipes bringing steam and hot water into the building, uh, which was a big innovation at the time. And they had tennis courts. They had croquet courts. It was a, it was a real gem. It still is. It's one of my favorite buildings in New York. Oh, yeah. uh, every time I go up there uh, to Central Park, at least, I try to pop out uh, on that area and just go go give it a look uh, because it's a beautiful building. It's sort of a mishmash of styles. Uh, it's been called, you know, French Renaissance or got German Gothic or even Victorian. And it's kind of a little bit of everything, but it's it's beautiful. I've, I don't think I've ever seen it in person. If I have, I, I didn't realize it. You may have. It's it's lovely. It's right there on a corner. So here's the thing. When um, Edward Cabot Clark was creating the Dakota, um, he was widely derided for it. They called it Clark's Folly because people were deeply insensitive in the 19th century. <laughs> and the reason why they call it that is because, again, it's in the middle of nowhere. And people aren't really into apartments, like we said. They live in, like, three-story brownstones. Like, they live in homes. They don't live in apartments. The people who lived in apartments, as far as this uh, How Stuff Works article points out, were widows, widowers, and people who were waiting for their wealthy relatives to die so they could inherit their house. (laughs) And all of a sudden, Clark is like, no, no, we're changing the game. Anyone who is anyone is going to want to live in an apartment. And it turns out his gamble paid off. He was right. Yeah, he sadly he died before it uh, was finished. It is sad. So he didn't get to see it come to fruition, but it was certainly not his folly, because uh, like you said, people lined up to rent these things, or I guess I don't know were they all rentals at the time? I wonder if anyone were available for sale. I think they were all rentals. Okay, well, people rented them, but they were people that had money. They just weren't like robber barons who wanted to live in mansions. They were they were sort of the early New York you know, upper class. They were people who, like, were bank presidents and people who, like, the CEOs of the time. Right. Uh, apparently, the Adam sisters were heirs to a chewing gum 
Fortune, uh, they live there. What's that? And that, that flavored tea berry, one of the greatest gum flavors of all time. That's Adam. <laughs> what was it? Tea berry. Now, are you kidding? Because I can't tell. <laughs> no, no, that's for real. It's okay. like a, a kind of salmon pink colored um, gum. No, no, the the wrapper is. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it tastes like salmon too. No, it's a really delicate, unique flavor, and you could probably find it at, like Cracker Barrel. Don't they have all sorts of old timey candies? Or one I of those Rocket Fizz places? I have no idea. Anywhere that sells candy, I'll bet they have tea berry stick gum, and it's really worth trying. All right. I'll check. Nice tip there. Thanks. So uh, the Dakota started a trend. All of a sudden, uh, luxury apartment houses started popping up all over the place, uh, kind of in the same uh, model with like bigger rooms and higher ceilings and stuff like that. And the Upper West Side, uh, it wasn't right then, but around the early 1900s, that really started to take off and really changed the face of New York. Of New York, you know, they they started building up more after World War One, obviously, uh, when New York said they could, and apartments became the way to go. Yeah. Um, eventually, the the Dakota started seeing a different clientele. Not you know, straights and squares like bank presidents, but like stars like Lauren Bacall and Judy Garland. Wowie, wow. And Boris Karloff, too. That's pretty mm. cool. Imagine living next to him. And then, of course, two of the most famous residents, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, who yeah. was widely blamed for moving John Lennon to the Dakota, and he would have lived had she not done that. Do people say that? <laughs> Probably somebody out there. I was uh, okay. poking fun at those people. No, I think he loved the Dakota. Yeah, that would seem to be his home. They were there for like a dozen years, I think, right, before he died? Uh, I'm not sure how long. He loved New York City, though. It was it was a great scene for both he and Yoko. Yep. You got anything else? I got nothing else. Go check out the Dakota if you're in New York. It's a great, great-looking building. Yes, it is. And uh, since Chuck said that, that means short stuff's out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.